Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we have four mini makes in this art journal tutorial and we will be using our napkin scraps. So this little book, just to refresh your memory, was a Dollar Tree find and I will put a link in the I cards, the I in the top right hand corner, to where I showed how I turned those black pages, I gessoed over them and then I jelly printed on a variety of them and that's what you see here. So as I'm going to do these mini makes, here's the process that I go through. I'm just going to flip them onto my tabletop and I'm just just want a variety of different backgrounds. Now some of these are a little more done than others, some have stamping, some have more stenciling, some are very plain and that's okay because I don't know what they're going to be used for. I can always add during the art journaling process. All I want to do now is just get a variety of them down and then I'm going to pull out a source of focal images and we are going to, I'm going to talk you through some of the decision making um, that I go through when I'm deciding what to, what focal image to put on a background. And being that these are mini makes and they're, you know, roughly the size of, of an artist trading card, two and a half by three and a half, something like that. They're not exactly that size. Now here I have a stash of the leftover little bits of napkin. Some napkins have really small scale side elements where I've taken out the major focal image and then there's little butterflies or little branches. And I've just been collecting those and I put them off to the side. I know I, you've heard me saying in the other videos, oh, I'll use this at some point in time. So this is where they went. It's not kept too particularly pristine. I kind of just jammed them in there, but I thought I'd better use them. Some like this butterfly are perfectly cut out. Others are just, part of the napkin. But they can be used and we don't need to waste anything. So I'm liking how that butterfly is going on to this jelly printed background. Now if you wish to skip ahead and go directly to the first of the makes, go to minute 734 and you don't have to listen to me talk about the process. Now I'm really liking this butterfly on this background. It has that same lime green in it and the pink of that butterfly is really showing up. I have another butterfly that was from the same napkin. I'm thinking that one is a match. Now here's a magnolia from a napkin and I'm liking, it has the same colors as that background, that yellow, green, and even there's a little bit of red in that one. So I'm just going to place them down where I think they fit. Now, when you're going through this process, try not to get stuck. Move fairly quickly. Here, I love this tulip against this blue-green background because the red or the corally color is a complementary color. So it is going to show. And realize that there's many right possible answers you're just examining options. And sometimes I'm looking to try something that I normally wouldn't be doing. So I'm just putting, I'm putting that tulip with, you know, if there are two or three backgrounds that I like with it. I like this one, it's got some stenciling on it. That background right there was pretty much complete. Now I have a piece of Tim Holtz ephemera here that somehow ended up with my napkins. And we're just additioning. Here I have this hummingbird with this spiky flower. And those colors are perfect. The blue, the green, there's even that little bit of red that matches the flower. And the size of this is perfect. And then I'm looking up here, we have this gel print with the splotches. It, the pink stars that are in the background really work well with that floral. 
So I'm thinking I really like that. Well, nope, wrong shade. And so I go. I addition, take it off, flip flop. You may want to set yourself a timer and saying, I'm only going to do this for 10 minutes or seven minutes or whatever it took. For me, going through this whole process, putting them out, took approximately seven and a half minutes. But at the end, I have the makings for four different cards. And that's why I'm, I'm doing multiples. Now, I may decide to put some of those aside and not do all of them in one sitting. Remember, these are mini makes. And the joy of the mini make is that if you don't have a lot of time, you can get in there, create something, and get out. If I wasn't going to do all of them, I would just set them aside with the napkin on top of the uh, background, and then I'm good to go the next time. I don't have to start looking for the match. And I'm still finalizing. As I'm going, I'm taking out some of these cards, the backgrounds, saying, you know, I'm debating between that one and that one. And I end up choosing the one in the bottom because I think I could make better use of the top one with more detail. Not much of that's going to end up showing on the bottom one. So process of elimination, step by step. I'm between these two. And I end up choosing this one because I really like that stenciling with that daffodil stencil in the background. It gives a floral motif in the background. It's just one less thing that I have to add when I finish this little mini page. So again, you can adjust it. If you have more time, you may pick a planar background. Or if you don't have more time, you might pick one that's just ready to go. You're just basically going to match it to a focal image, pick a, pick a sentiment, and do some finishing. So there we have the makings of four mini makes. So with the first make, I am just going to water cut the excess napkin off. And I'm using a liner brush and water. And I'm just, I run that where I want to cut. And then I just very gently pull it off. I prefer taking as much of the napkin, excess napkin off as possible. It, for the most part, does go translucent, but I don't like the look of it so much. So I rather go this route. And that's what you see me doing here. Now that background, you see that the pink kind of stars on there? That just, oh, I just love that. And it's just, it's almost as if this background was made for this focal image. Now, when you're using napkins, you can piece parts together to compose your focal image. And that's what I'm doing here. This one is off the side of the napkin. It's only a half of a flower, but I'm just going to layer it up and make it a perfect fit on this mini napkin. Now, I'm taking a makeup sponge and I have a little white paint and I'm just very lightly whiting out the area underneath where I'm going to glue the napkin down. Now the reason I'm doing this is to keep the colors pure for my focal image. I don't want any of that darkness coming through and dulling my focal image. This is extremely important, especially if you're not going to do any overpainting on top of the napkin which I'm going to do, but I still prefer to do that and just add a little bit of white space to it. Now I'm using my fluid matte medium and putting some underneath and then on top. Now, I'm not too worried about the white in the background, it all works really well. It was very soft edge. 
looks as if I wanted it that way. If it was too white, I could just take a wash of the blue or that green and go over it and get rid of the white. I'm edging with black acrylic paint on the makeup sponge. This just frames your page. And for me, it's an essential. Now, I decided that I am going to overpaint on the flowers. And I have a fine brush there, and I'm taking some white gesso and quinacridone magenta and very loosely, globally, if that's a word, I'm painting that flower. It's an abstract flower, and I'm using the napkin as the guide for the shape. And I'm mixing the paint, some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. That's just going to serve as highlights and shading. Putting some white in the middle, and then I'm going to come back and put some yellow. Now I'm doing a wash with acrylic paint on top of the hummingbird and this one is iridescent paint and so it's going to have that shine that hummingbirds have when you when the light just catches them right just adding a little bit of a wash of color on the leaves i'm adding a leaf down here because it got cut off Just adding some shading in between. Now, the sentiments that I'm using on all four of these makes come from the Short and Sweet Sentiment Pack, and you can get that at Nini's Napkins. It is a wonderful sentiment pack full of short and sweet sentiments that are white with black lettering and black background with white lettering like you see here. And you get it in both colors. There are just tons of them and they are perfect for mini makes, ATCs, iCADs, and smaller journal pages. I'm using my General's Charcoal Pencil just to add a little bit of detail. Grab my Secura Glaze and I'm just outlining it. And we're done. Now we're moving on to the second make. So once again, I'm getting rid of the excess napkin. You can use a pair of scissors. And once again, I am going to adjust the composition. I can make the two look taller or shorter. As I see fit, I can layer the leaves. I can even take stuff from one napkin and put it on a, mix it with another one. Gluing it down with my matte medium, a lot of these steps are very similar. Loving that stenciling in the background. Adding some script stamp. The napkins that I'm using here um, come from Ninny's Napkins, and she's way more than napkins. She has stamps and stencils, and there is a discount code in the description box. Here, instead of paint, painting loosely on it, I am just doing a wash of color just to darken the focal image. You can see some of the some of the uh, lines from from the background show through. And I'm just pushing that back ever so slightly. But I'm mainly just doing a wash of color here, just to darken it. Whereas on the first one, I actually added texture. I'm splattering with the alizarin crimson to introduce that color into the background, the color from the tulip into the background. You want things to work together. And then I'm splattering with gold as well. 
Now, here is my short and sweet sentiment pack. I have some things printed on adhesive paper. I've got it printed on tea stained paper, coffee stained paper. And then I have keep all those little bits in an envelope. So I pull them and then I, it's just a matter of, again, matching the sentiment and the size of the sentiment to the background. And here again, I like the black background with the white lettering and I'm just putting be grateful. These mini makes, you could be doing these on the four by four um, mini canvases. The, the little leftover bits of napkin would probably work very well for that. Or the cardboard coasters, and the, those are available at Ninny's napkins too. Now I'm using the charcoals pencil here again, and I'm shading around the outside edges. and around the sentiment. Now all told, all four of these took about an hour to do, just over an hour. So that's about 15 minutes per mini make. Now this background, it's the perfect colored background for the colors of this napkin. And I am gluing the napkin down first before I do anything additions to that background because I don't want any marks to come through the napkin. Now here I'm going to do the painterly effect. I'm globbing on white gesso and then I'm going to put some of the Naples yellow in there and a little bit of the alizarin crimson. These mini makes are the perfect place to practice this technique. Because if it doesn't go well, you can throw it out. Very little risk. Remember in this um, dollar store find, one, it's very inexpensive, and two, there were way more sheets than we'll be able to use once they're all filled in. So this is the perfect time to practice this technique. And with practice, you'll get good at it. The fa I find when I'm doing this painterly technique, overpainting on top of a focal image, whether it's a magazine image, focal image, or from a napkin, just go loosely. Don't overthink it. And add, you know, various colors and shades. but I only got good at it by doing it, by challenging myself. And this one I kept very loose. I didn't give it a lot of definition at all. And I really like this effect. I'm adding, you know, a little bit darker, a little bit lighter colors. Now I wanted to add something to the background, so I'm using the alizarin crimson and this random dot stencil from the Crafters Workshop and adding some of the red dots, and then I'm adding some of the green. Just introducing the colors in the, from the focal image into the background, but very subtly. Now I'm edging it with the green. And you see me doing this often. Often I'll edge it with green and then come back and do black. And, and, and I will be doing that. This time from the short and sweet, these are printed off on adhesive paper. So you just need to peel it off if your fingers are clean. I turned off the camera to, so I'm just putting the word escape. And it was looked a little too white, so I'm just giving it a gentle wash with the Naples yellow.
And then I decide, you know, now that I have the black lettering, I need the black edging around the outside. So I'm just going with the black makeup sponge. And then I decide I need a little bit of script on here. Just adding a little bit, and I absolutely adore this one. It's beautiful. So moving right along, I have these two butterflies, and one butterfly didn't seem enough. Two seemed the wrong scale, and then I realized I had these little guys on this other napkin. And one of them is teal, and one is kind of that lime green, which is exactly the colors that were in the background. So I'm cutting them off that napkin. I will do a little bit of water cutting and then playing around. And this way I can have one big focal image and then the two smaller ones. And that just seems to work better for me. Then I'm just deciding if what kind of sentiment do I want? Do I want the black with the white lettering or do I want white with the black lettering? You just audition the possibilities. Needed a bigger word. So I decide that I want to white out some of the back, but I grab this screen view stencil, one of my favorites. And at first I grab the white gesso, but it's not as opaque as I want. So then I grab white acrylic paint and come back and it gets a little more opaque, a little more coverage. I wanted to add a little more detail to the background, a little more interest. I'm grabbing another stencil and then I decide, you know, I want some, instead of the, my script stamp here, I'm going to use my archival ink and my blending brush and this text that's on this ethereal stencil. And I'm just going to rub. This is a good way of doing it. Sometimes when you do this fine stuff with uh, acrylic paint, it seeps under and makes a mess. And that of using the archival ink and the blending brush like this avoids that. That's a different kind of text. Now my text here was a little too bold for my taste and too blocky, but you'll see what I do. Ideally, what I should have done is put the text on and then use the screen view. If I was doing it again, I would have done it in that order, but sometimes you don't know what you're doing until you do it. I'm just adding a little bit on here and then finalizing the position of the butterflies. And I like how it says melodic phrases at the top. Somehow that word melodic and the ethereal goes so well with, with the butterfly. I'm going to glue these down again with my fluid matte medium. And that's my preferred medium to use when I'm gluing down napkins. And use a lot of it. That helps make it translucent for the napkins, for the tissue papers. A bit of a secret there. I didn't put any text, any of that under here, but now I'm just whiting it out just like I did the first one to and so I so that text doesn't show through the napkin when I glue it down. Now I wanted to knock back some of that text, so I'm coming in with that makeup sponge with the white paint and just 
dabbing it ever so gently. And then I'm using the screen view stencil just to put it on top. So then we have the text, but it's not boxy and it's not so bold. Wanted to brighten the color of the butterfly, so I find a matching color, water it down, go on top ever so lightly. Remember that napkin is still fragile. If you wet it again, it's going to, you might be able to lift it off or rub it off. So you gotta be gentle. Just adding a little bit of that lime green. I love the softness of this background. Thought I used my blending brush and the archival ink to edge this. The, the ink had dried already. So I come back with black acrylic paint. Using my Secura Glaze to outline the sentiment. And I'm using dash dot dot dot, dash dot 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 all the way around. Adding a few details on the butterflies. I think I add more, I'm not sure. There, I've added more. It's not all on camera, sorry. I just want it, and I, the black edging that I'm doing is also giving it contrast. I wanted my butterfly to stand out just a little bit more than it was. Just adding a few more marks there. Just make sure everything is dry before you grab the Secure Glaze pen. Then I decide I'm going to splatter with the pink, introduce that pink from the middle of the butterfly to the background, loving that. And then all of these I want to splatter with gold. Now, make sure that they are completely dry before you try to put them back into the, I can't think of what the name of this book, the disc system, so it doesn't rip. Disc bound system, that's it. And there we have. So join me for my next mini make where I will source out another set of focal images from somewhere else in my stash. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, go get creative. Use your stash.